It was actually meant to protect rights of the citizens. It actually put their contraceptives to help these people prevent the transmission of HIV. In order to achieve, in order to achieve uh, the vision 2030, the government would have contraceptives because these contraceptives were going to help the youngest population in the transmission of HIV to stop the prevention. So, Chair, what are the arguments of saying or why we think it is important to hold life? Number one, we think public health responsibility. Religious institutions have a big role, have an obligation in, in this public health responsibility. When they actively campaign against the use of contraceptives, it means they are actually against the use of what is going to be helping guts in preventing the spread of HIV. So we think it is really important for these people to notice that public health responsibility should be vital in the real, real deal. Secondly, we think there is compensation for harm. When you hold these financial institutions dying, you are actually compensating for the harm they actually create. By the fact that we have the youngest population in the world, it means that each and every area in this country is actually consisting of you. It means that each and every area in the country has a good number of youth. So it is important to notice that when they compensate for this harm, they're actually going to be, it's going to be a deterrent measure for these institutions to actually be held financially liable. Number three, we notice that we live in a world where we're actually debating about developing nations. Developing nations have limited resources. Developing nations have liable resources. Health infrastructure is actually low. So we think that when the government is actually providing for these people, that are having HIV, it is going to be a financial strain if the burden is put on the government. So we think it is important to notice that when the burden is actually put on these religious institutions, it's actually going to be held in this financial strain that the government is having in Uganda. But no understand yeah. that the government of Uganda is having a financial strain. The Bank of Uganda is being demanded by the World Bank. The World Bank actually ceased to give it funds. Why? Because it is not paying back the money that was actually supposed to be required. So we think it is important to notice that when religious institutions are actually actively campaigning against what the government is prioritizing for people, they are actually going against what the government is doing. But I understand that religious institutions in Uganda have a right to freedom. But when they have a right of freedom, when freedom becomes too much or when you misuse freedom, it means that you have, you have to be put a deterrent measure that is going to help you use the freedom in the right manner. We think when they have different beliefs or when they have different perspectives of what they do, it is important to notice that the government should look on what protects the variety of people, the diverse minds of people. I'll take a bit of time. Are religious institutions the only things that influence people's choices in status quo? In this debate, we're looking at religious institutions. And religious institutions have different beliefs. We have Muslims, we have Christians. These are values that are instilled in people. These are beliefs that are instilled in people. You need to notice that when these religious institutions are influencing the various minds of the people, they are going to affect their use in this country. For instance, in Uganda, we have the Roman Catholics. They are actually against the use of contraceptives. What problems do they actually implicate? Number one, we've seen the increase in the financial health burden of the country. Number two, we've seen that they are keeping, they are, they are teaching these people how to spread the transmission. They are actually spreading the transmission indirectly. Number three, we're seeing that it is actually restricting the freedom of these institutions by the fact that they are against the government. It means that they are liable, behold financially liable. It means that when they are actually going against the use of contraceptives, if contraceptives were put in place to actually limit all the spread of HIV, it means it is important or it is vital to actually hold those that are responsible who are preaching against the use of these contraceptives. Pardon, no, understand that when you are going to achieve Vision 2030, you need to notice three things. One, you notice that you can only fight stigma, you can only fight uh, the transmission, you can only fight these things by using contraceptives. And the only way or when an institution is actually against the use of contraceptives, it is vital in the prevention, it is vital in fighting the spread of HIV. So we think it is important to hold them financially liable. Thank you. I would like to thank the speaker for that fine speech. I would like to invite the first speaker from the opposition to open their case. Yeah, yeah.
also has to uphold this image. The means that at a point in time for government and these particular people to work together, the image of government actually has to be upheld. I'll show you why this matters later in our case. Two, as the first government speaker actually characterized, we think largely these particular developing countries are actually people, or countries that are low on resources, right? At the end of the day, that means all these institutions within it are suffering. That means institutions including hospitals, the transport network, the churches, and the most at the end of the day. At a point in time where you then want to hold these particular religious institutions financially right? viable, well, we think it's one, a model that cannot be applicable because first of all, like you say, the, 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 the suffering with resources and there's a strain, the even the religious position within these particular developing countries cannot uphold this, right? At the point in time where government then wants to have education or help actually provide for these particular people or to reduce on their financial strain, we think putting a burden on someone who cannot actually provide that money at the end of the day does not work. Two, they come and tell us that religious they, 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 they're trying to work in a not accepted, they're trying to work in a world where they're uh, trying to show us that everyone in these particular developing countries actually go to church or they're inherently notoriously religious. Chair, I ask the question, do you think religious institutions are the only things that influence people's choices in these particular developing countries? Chair, what is that assisting in these assistance? This okay. particular not accepted. These people in these particular developing countries are the young population. Young population who are influenced by a lot of things. Let's say social media, let's say let's say let's say social media, let's say Western influence, right? So we think a smarter government team would have said that for us to actually hold the religious institutions financially liable, they have to be entirely to blame for this high rate of HIV privilege, right? They talk about the youngest population being in these particular developing countries. We think that is in and itself true. And we think that this particular young population are more than rational, right? We think with things happening within these religious institutions, people are actually withdrawing from them. We think because of contradictions within, within the churches, when one when people cannot put one and two together, one and two do not make sense, people inherently then leave these particular religious institutions. That means that at the end of the day, these people are not actually to blame as they claim, right? Chair, they also come and talk about no, chair, this, this particular debate in and then when you take them at their best, then it's a debate of nature versus nature, right? They're trying to say that this particular religious institution at the end of the day then influence the choices of these particular young people. We think one, before you are natural, you exist by nature. Why is this important? We think at the end of the day, the same religious institutions that preach against the use of contraceptives also preach abstinence. The people still go ahead and have sex. Why? Nature. The utilitarian principle says that people are going to go and maximize their preferences and do what best favors their preferences. But if this is having sex, if this is having sex without a condom, they then do it. At a point in time where we then do not think that this particular religious institution inherently influence the choices of these people, why should you hold them financially liable? We think that the concepts of religion, of religion are one, faith and reason. But you think because of particular people, people then in, people then tend to suspend reason by themselves and actually only have faith at the end of the day. We think this is what nature looks like, right? We think at the end of the day, people are supposed to be blamed for their individual responsibility. Major value from our side of the house is why sanctity of human life. We think sanctity of human life then starts with the individual, not to a religious institution at the end of the day, right? Sure. We think a lot of information is widespread about HIV AIDS, whether it's from church, whether it's from the government, whether it's from NGOs like TASO. So information only becomes valuable when you attach value to it. We think at the end of the day, whether the church preaches against contraceptives or that the most tells us not to actually use condoms at the end of the day, this information only becomes valuable to me because I attach value to it. At the end of the day, what does this show us? Individual responsibility. Chair, sure. we think that the other no, things not accepted. The other things that actually influence people's decisions, apart from religion, like I already said. So the point in time where we are holding someone financially liable, yet they're even not to blame for this, what image does this paint of the government? Before I move on to my next point, I'll take the point. So are you in agreement that the church or basically religion influences the mindsets of individuals in engaging what they tell them? Understand, Chair. I say that religion does influence, but they are not entirely to blame. Because notice at a point in time in status quo, the people who are actually going to churches are not the young people. Young people like myself are more looking at Twitter, are more looking at what people like Andrew Tate are actually telling me, are looking at what Kim Kardashian is actually saying about the, this HIV agent. Chair, another thing, we think that government incentive is something that's actually in the best interest, right? Let's look at how government does make decisions. We think government cannot secretly make this particular decision of holding religious institutions financially liable. That means that people have to know, the people within this religious institution has to know, the proper 
forward at the end of the day have to know what does this look like? It makes the population look lose hope in its government. Because I think that government is actually pushing on financial responsibility to someone who is not inherently to pay. Two, it affects the government's reputation on a wider scope. At a point in time where we are forcing people of the most to actually pay for, for, for something that's supposed to be our responsibility, then what is the government who actually do? Impacts of this, we start government and the people not actually working together. Two, they actually have actually also see that people are actually not trusting the government. The government is not being respected in the wider scope. And I don't think we get from our side of the house. We think that they say there are limited resources within this government and this financial stream. It's the government that's not working. That's so we have organizations like right. PEPA in Uganda. That's why we have TASO. Yeah, but if we want to win this debate, right. they have to show us why religion is entirely to blame for this. I'd love to rest. Let's thank that speaker for that fight.
fight. If the religious institution cannot actually acknowledge the fact that the government is actually trying to fight HIV AIDS in this and this way, and they actually come to acknowledge that one, they're preaching against abstinence, just to also stop uh, maybe, maybe HIV, right? They should also consider that contraceptives are also being brought up by government. For reason, not to actually come and contradict with the government. If you're having two contradictory things, uh, I'd like to rebuild on our, on, our, on our cases. One, if you're compensating for harm, you should consider which, which, which part is actually causing more harm in the country. If one is willing to break a promise that is actually legal in the country, who want to hold them by national level? Come on, even when criminals break laws, they actually get arrested. Why are we leaving these religious institutions out? Yet they are the ones who are actually causing the problem. If the government is there and it is uh, in a strain, uh, just because uh, I'm fighting against the force of HIV, but they're also telling people not to use my advice. What is actually causing that? It, uh, it is the religious issue that is actually causing an economic strain onto the government, which is actually trying to protect the people's rights and is holding everyone uh, actually uh, to each public health responsibility. Uh, that's the to, uh, to uh, add on to the public health responsibility. If the government is there and provides contraceptives, right, I think it's liable because one, if there's a, sig if there's a significant majority that is actually stating that yes, contraceptives are actually helping us, why is the religious institution coming up to say that no, they're not going to help us? If government has adapted and has learned that abstinence is was there, uh, being faithful was there, but why did they come on and bring on contraceptives? This is another reason why we should hold these institutions financially liable, medical expenses, because they are one, not acknowledging that this thing was actually put there for a reason. Two, they don't acknowledge that the significant majority is actually using contraceptives to actually prevent the spread of HIV in Uganda. So they do not come and acknowledge or justify why these people should not be held accountable. For some crime, they are also competing. Then I do not believe that the religious institutions right here are trying to actually solve the HIV AIDS in Uganda. Well, to fight HIV AIDS, uh, HIV uh, AIDS in Uganda, we have to make these people financially liable because one, it's going to have to change their mindset. Two, we have to uh, have to let them know that even abstinence is there, but you also need to come and change their ways and understand that contraceptives are also essential. Because if people are, you come and tell us something very good. If people are actually having bad HIV, and then you come and still tell them, please don't use those models. Who is going to be actually stopping HIV in the country? A government or a religious that is actually fighting against the use of condoms. With that, I rest my case. Speech, I would like to invite a second speaker from side opposition. Here, here. Why do you choose the wrong thing and then you go ahead to blame someone else? 
Now, this is an active motion. How? The government is supposed to be affected in some way or another, right? So when you look at that, that is our government, what best benefits the government, right? Our government has, a, first of all, a reputation to uphold, and also to a social contract theory it has to uphold to its people, right? So what do we have then? Look at the government that we're looking for. We're going to give a case study of Uganda. We look at the government of Uganda in itself. It's already broken, as we can see. We have corruption in itself, right? So when we have the government getting the opportunity to blame and put their financial burden on the, on the, on the, on the religious institutions, what then do we have? We lack accountability on the side of the government, and they actually the social contracts. Because people do their duty by paying their taxes. So what then do we have from this side? We have people paying their taxes, and the government putting an excuse of churches, and uh, most probably, um, speaking against contraceptives and blaming them and taking more money from them. And already look at the flood system that we have. What then do we have? We have extortion in itself as an extension. What happens when churches are being financially liable, right? They are demanding for more time and they are demanding for more fertility. When they are demanding for these things, what do we have? The people have to work harder. The money could be put into something else, but no. The government has the excuse of putting it on the HIV people and mistakes that the people have made on their own. And the churches are left with a bigger burden. What then do we have? We have people leaving the religious institutions to go and find other means to to put their money in order than being exploited by the government and the church in itself as they are both that as well to control the government. I will take you. Is the church independent from the government? Yes, it is. We're looking at developing nations in themselves, right? We're not looking at England whereby the church controls the monarchy. No, we're looking at developing nations like Uganda, whereby the church stands on its own. I gave you a case study of whereby we see that there are churches that are under that tree. How is the church involved to the government in any way? They have no attachment to the government whatsoever. So they should not be held financially liable. Now, they, we come to, they come and speak to us about the youth. Now, we also question the question them and we ask them, are religious institutions the only thing that actually control the choices that people make? And they fail to engage with this. Now, let us show you. Media controls the institution that youth make, as we have seen that there are 78% youths in the country in itself. That is not a case study, right? So what then do we have? We have the youth being led by the media information, and they choose to take on what the media says to them. And is the church going to stop them? No. The church preaches against thief, against stealing, against murdering. But still we have thieves and murderers today. People know what to do. People do away with reason and choose to only choose faith and have someone to blame at the end of the day. So self-responsibility is something we must look at inherently inside this debate in itself, right? Now, when we look at the government, the, gov the government, the government has an incentive, right? The government cannot secretly, please rest. The government cannot secretly call out the church institutions and actually hold them financially liable. They must tell the whole of the nation. What does this look like? This looks like backlash. Why? Because the people attend these institutions. Of course, they're not worried that being accepted by the churches in themselves. Look at the nature of developing nations today and the financial and the religious institutions and churches today. We have extortion happening already without this financial burden. What happens then when we hold the financial when we hold religious institutions of financial thing? Like, well, please stop this the risk. Um, what happens then when we have this happening, right? We have people living in financial living religious institutions and people running away from extortion in itself. What happens then? There is, this case actually holds no and it's not logical or justifiable for this person to do this because it's not going to work at the end.